Hi everybody, Renegade67 Andor68 here with some more Let's Play Andor Stream, Andor Fate Stay, Andor Night, sure, Andor Unlimited Blade Works, Andor Blind. So, um, last time we had a we had a nice little cutesy bonding moment with Rin, which you know, <laughs> and we saw an important moment for her in her past where she saw Shiro going over some high jump bars and it was like it inspired Rin to be determined or something like that? Something like that for sure. Definitely something like that. Um, and now it looks like Assassin is alive and stuff and is fighting, he's holding on by a thread just to fight Saber. He didn't do this in Timeline 1 because either someone actually killed him or he faded because they didn't actually make a promise, I guess. I don't know. I hope they explain that to us at some point. I'm not sure how they would, given that it's timeline one, but it's possible if they start explaining their own timeline shenanigans. Um, and then, yeah, Gilgamesh is fighting Shiro. That's exciting. That's definitely what I'm looking forward to. But, you know, Assassin's Saber could be cool, too. So, the long sword slashes the darkness. Let's go. Saber has yet to be able to close in on her enemy that freely swings his long sword. Mmm. Oh, boy. Much flashes. Kuh. What a nice song. Unable to dodge, she retreats. Hmm. Can't go left or right, so you must go backwards. The distance between the two does not shrink. So she's going backwards the same rate he's going forwards then. There is one meter between Saber and Assassin. But Saber is unable to climb the few steps. Is it really called climbing the steps if you, like, just gracefully jump up, like, 30 at a time? I suppose you could still call that climbing, but, like, you know, I think of climbing as, like... I don't even... I mean, I think of climbing as taking effort to uh, do something like that. Uh, so, like, if you, you know, gradually stepping up uh, inclined steps like this... Yeah, that's, that's definitely effort taking. Climbing a mountain, or, you know go on all fours, but like, horizontally, no, vertically, I always get those mixed up, um, you go up, and, uh, that takes effort, so that's like climbing, but if you just casually jump up steps like it's nothing, is that climbing? I don't know if I would count that as climb, let's look up the definition of climbing, this is early, but you know, I didn't have any spiel at the start of this one, because I did want to just get into it, but now I'm in the mood, what is climbing? I go off on the weirdest tangents, but that's okay. The sport or activity of ascending mountains or cliffs. Uh, yeah. I'm even being lenient then by saying you can count, you can climb stairs. Wow, look at me being lenient. Alright. Saber's unable to climb the few steps. Dashes. She bites her lip. I feel like if you really bite your lip, there'd be, like, really big pain. You know, people always use the expression of, oh, you bite your lip, but, like, you know, if you're really biting hard... That's a big bite. That's like a summoning jutsu of blood level of bite. She cannot waste any time. She surpasses him in power. She can overpower him if she uses her magical energy and her sword as a shield. Mm. But then what are you going to use as, as, as your sword if you're using your sword as your shield? Just one blow. Hmm... Do we have, uh, uh, Assassin? Uh, no. They still haven't bothered to give us his true name in this timeline. But we know he's Asaki Gojiro, so what are they doing? I kind of want to remember his shtick, because it's been a while since Timeline 2 only skimmed their fight. Timeline 1 gave us the big fight. It's been a while since that, and they don't bother giving us the details. So I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing, game? <laughs> uh. Anyways, just one blow. She can overpower him if she can withstand just one blow. It can be her arm or leg. If she does not allow the wound to slow her, there will be no second attack. Ah, I see. Let him attack one of your uh, important places. As long as it's not too important, well, you attack him, but with a more finishing your attack. I understand the strategy. She can surely slash his ass after he receives his blow. But, if the attack is to come for her neck, she cannot overpower him. All of this servant's attacks are of that kind. Mm. 
all are meant to take her life. Uh, she needs one that's not meant to take her life, but I guess... I guess beggars can't be choosers, so... You could do it. I guess, debatably, you could try to do what Future Shiro was doing in his fight with Lancer. Uh, where you leave convenient openings that Lancer's like, Oh, I'm definitely going to go for that, because you left yourself open. But that lets Archer predict how Lancer's going to fight. Saber could potentially fight sort of like that, but if Saber's goal is to make him go after a non-lethal area, she'd have to do it differently, but you could employ similar tactics to achieve a different result in that case, I think. Retreat is the only defense against them. But how far can you retreat? Well, Assassin is tied to this gate, I suppose, so you could, could potentially retreat fully, but uh, that's not solving anything if you want to get through. She cannot move forward because of the enemy's technique. And the geographical disadvantage does not allow her to move either side. Mm-hmm. She cannot move forward because of those reasons. That's a repetitive uh, reading. She cannot move forward because of the enemy's blah, 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 blah. She cannot move forward because... I mean, yeah, you didn't have to restate that. She must reach the temple alive. The two are fighting Gilgamesh even at this moment. <laughs> it's worse than that. It's just basically just Shiro, <laughs> but sure. <laughs> They might die if she's late. No, in the worst case, they're already dead. You better not think like that, Rin. I mean, Rin. Uh, <laughs> um, if they are already dead, then you would definitely feel that, Saber, because you have a connection with Rin, right? Aggressive roar. Battle cry. Slash. Well, actually, she, it says she runs, but the swing is sewing a swing. She rushes upward, yelling as if to deny the ominous thought. The two weapons collide. Mm hmm. For some reason, Assassin swings his sword, not at the charging saber, but at the swinging sword. Well, it makes sense. Focus on the weapon. Um, that's more of a defensive move than an off offensive one, which is basically the opposite of what uh, Saber would want Assassin to do at this point. He probably predicted uh, Saber's moves in that case. Not that we'd know, because we can't, like, check Assassin's abilities. He has precise concealment, um, so he hides his presence as a servant, suitable for spying, even though he's not a spy at all, though that may come up at some point. I guess Saber didn't notice Assassin's presence as he was going up the temple to fight Gilgamesh, but, like, beyond that... We don't know his details or his skills, Grumble. Oh, Saber no king. Impressive. As expected from Saber's sword. I thought it would be able to take a few blows, but it was bent after just one. <laughs> oh, do you, can you also sword birth or fix your sword somehow? Because if your sword's bent, then that's bad. Sparks fly off. Because if your sword's bent, that's a pretty big deal, right? The swords try to push each other away. <laughs> Assassin blocked my sword? Apparently his sword got bent though, which seems like a big deal to me, unless he can fix it on the fly somehow. Assassin's sword is fragile. The Mono Hoshi's out has a name, so it should be good in some way. Maybe that means it can fix itself up. It's a good sword that can even cut steel, but it is made by human. It cannot even be compared to her sword that is not made by men. Ah, yes, because even though it's invisible wind, that's concealing the true strength of Excalibur. It's still not like a man-made weapon. His longsword would be pulverized if he used, used his power to strike back at the oncoming attack. Mm. But it was only bent. But, but, he said it was bent. Pretty sure he said it was bent. So what's he doing about that? <laughs> that is why Assassin has parried the attacks and pushed back Saber by attacking her body instead of her sword until now. Ah, she focused on her, her body, forcing Saber to block. Um, makes sense, because um, if, if he gave Saber an opening to be on the offensive, Assassin's Sword can't really keep up with Saber's sword. However, it's been bent already, so what's the solution, Assassin? What do you got? There's no way you're done yet. <laughs> but Assassin blocked this attack. Assassin's sword cannot block Saber's attack no matter how strong he is. 
The long sword that blocks Saber's attack is bent. Okay, what's the solution then? Interesting. So, your first scuffle in both timeline 1 and 2, this didn't seem to be an issue. His sword was never bent. I guess because he was on so much of the offensive like crazy in both cases. I suppose in both cases, Saber was in a weakened position because she was tied to Shiro without Avalon and no dragon sex either. So, here, Saber should be in a much stronger position than she was in those fights. No Avalon, but... Um, she has proper circulation and stronger circulation by being connected to Rin. I mean, Rin might have to sap some power away from her to give some more to Shiro later on, so that's all the more reason for Saber to win faster, but... Longsword the Black, Saber's attack is bent. There's no way it's as sharp as it was before. I can beat him? Can I beat him without a scratch? Ooh, this, se this does definitely seem too easy. What's your trick, Assassin? What do you got? You said earlier that you had, like, no noble phantasm. You were just super special awesome. Like, oh, I'm a super special awesome swordsman. Or the myth you're based on is, but no noble phantasm. Something's telling me, though, that may not be entirely accurate. Maybe no final smash, but, like, a regenerative sword, maybe? Saber asks herself, will she push back Assassin's longsword? Yeah, because she's like, this guy's really tough. And now she's like, wait, maybe this guy's not that tough. Uh, don't doubt yourself, Saber. You thought uh, he was tough. Trust that instinct. That question becomes an opening. For Assassin? There's a reason why Assassin blocked her sword. To make her think that there is an opening? For her? She is standing in that position before she realized it. Oh no! It's all some crazy strategy on Assassin's part. Whoa! <gasps> Ellipses exclamation point! Their positions are different. They are now standing on the same level. And that's bad, right? Before she realized that Saber has been forced to fight sideways. Okay. Oh, because... Well, isn't that good for her? Because up until now... Well, theoretically. I forget exactly how Assassin's... He has some fancy technique that can cut birds or something. I forget what that's all about. But, um... Uh, up until now, Saber's been forcing to fa fight an uphill battle, and you know, the one with the high ground has the advantage. <laughs> um, so, like, as Assassin's attacking down, in that scenario, for if Saber can't dodge right or left, jumping back would be, you know, hurt her, and S Assassin can use his momentum coming down the stairs to be stronger. But then she leaves him with an opening, so uh, an opening for her if he, like, misses, but he's, you know, of course, really competent. Now that they're on the same level, theoretically, a Saber should be in a better position, unless it's the bird chirping attack is about to come at her. It is just like before, eh? They're standing on the same plane. Okay, this should mean, okay, the bird attacking attack. So I guess Assassin did that in Timeline 2 as well. I don't remember it, but I will trust that it's a thing, even though I don't remember it in Timeline 2. In Timeline 1, I remember it. In Timeline 2, it might have happened, but it might have been off-screen. Maybe their fight was more or less the same, so they off-screened a lot of it. This is the position he needs to execute his secret technique. Assassin is able to execute his demonic attack here. The thing is, though, if the, it went more or less the same, then wouldn't Assassin would have wanted a rematch in Timeline 1 as well? So why doesn't he fade? Unless he was killed. In which case, who killed him? You know, etc, etc, etc. Caster? Why? When? How? Yeah. Maybe these are questions that might be inadvertently answered in Timeline 3, but, uh, mm. Alright, this is the position he needs to execute his secret techniques. Assassin is able to execute his demonic attack here. Tsubame Gaishi. Three arcing blades close in on the enemy from all sides, allowing no chance for defense or evasion. Right, you can't go right, you can't go left. Mm. You can't go forward, so you can just go backward. Isn't that more or less the same as before, but you can't go backward either because, because you're too slow? You know, to quote a famous hedgehog. Dashes. Um, <laughs> uh, th I'm going a little too fast, I think, for being too slow. Dash, dash, dash. There, I'm slower. A chill runs up her back. Assassin, Assassin you! Saber stops pushing. She can push him back. She can push Assassin back with her strength and follow up with a finishing blow. Or run up to the mountain gate. But, what's the but? It'll be the same either way. Okay. 
that attack will come the instant she pushes him away. So if she runs away, he'll do the fancy attack. But if she tries to go up to the mountain gate, um, that means she's on the higher plane, right? So instead of being on the lower plane, she'd be on the higher plane. So uh, does that mean it's okay? Or would he do it the moment she tries to leave planes? I guess in that instance, that's enough. Um, you didn't miss much, Diploma. Saber and Assassin are fighting. And then Saber bent Assassin's sword um, because her sword is just better. And then Saber was like, wait, can I beat him easily internally? But that was bad because that gave Assassin an opening while she wasn't thinking. And then Saber's like, oh, that's right. He can use his bird a chop chopping attack to attack me. And that's what's happening here. That attack will come the instant she pushes him away. It will end once he executes his technique. It does not matter if she runs up to him or if she turns her back and runs up the mountain. I feel like it's supposed to, you made a big deal about being on the same plane. So if you go up the mountain, you're on a different plane. Doesn't that matter? I think you were just talking about how that matters. So she cannot push him. She can only loosen up and match Assassin's push. All right, so you force yourself to be on the defensive because if you get too close, that's right. That, that makes sense. The only uh, thing to do against that attack is to go backwards because you can't go left or right or forward. Um, so if you get too close, you'll lose your opening to go backward. So you're going to have to stay on the defensive. Okay, I can understand that. Are you sure you want to relax like that? I can push you back now. Um, his sword is still bent though, but that's okay because he can do his technique anyway. Mm. I don't believe you, Tupoima. I don't think Assassin can do things. No way. Not a chance. Assassin stares at Saber in satisfaction. There's no inhuman emotion there. Inhumane emotion. Mm. Big difference. Inhumane, I suppose. The swordsman is just fascinated by her eyes. Not in a gross way like Gilgamesh. <laughs> Trying to find some way out of this hopeless situation. Mm. Well, I mean, last time your way out of this hopeless situation, in both cases, was the Shiro card. Um, because the assassin was like, oh, I don't want Shiro getting in the way of our duel. So, clearly, the, the deciding factor here is you need something getting away in the duel. No, of course. That'd be too unhonorable. You have to find some way to win despite, you know, nothing getting in the way. <laughs> so this is why, why you damaged your own weapon? I don't get it. I mean, if all he needed was for her to be on the same plane, he could have just, you know, let her do that. Well, I guess that was the, the strategy there was... By blocking this certain way, it means she will end up on the same plane, whereas if I don't block, our plane difference will be different. I guess. Unless there's something more he gains out of a damaged weapon. Of course, I wanted to put an end to the match. I feel like it just started this match, but, uh, okay, sure, let's go straight to the end. Oh, this reminds me of, um... Uh, I won't say what fight, but it reminds me of a fight in Yu Hakusho where, um, where I remember thinking like, okay, it's just getting good. This fight, uh, is really gonna get to a boiling point. And then one of the characters involved is like, all right, let's end this. And I'm like, what? The fight just fucking started. I thought I skipped an episode legitimately and I had to go back. And I'm like, no, <laughs> they're like, let's end this. Even though the fight just started. And I'm like, what? Uh, but <clears throat> I'm very much not a fan of that fight. I don't want to say exactly what it is at the moment. Uh, I don't know. Spoilers, but, mm. It was built up for a while, and then it was like, let's end this. And I'm like, what? And I I don't think this fight has been built up as much as that fight was. But uh, Saber Assassin, the rematch, has been built up somewhat. So, <laughs> to be fair, though, just because they're saying he wants to put an end to the match doesn't mean the match will be over that quickly. I'm like a new Harkasha where it was over that quickly. But I want to put an end to the match. <laughs> I thought this would bring out the saber I saw previously. Do not think about what comes after this battle. We are still fighting. Oh, I see. That's why he's saying let's put an end to it. He wants this match to be drawn out. He wants to really enjoy it. But Saber is so preoccupied, focused on, you know, I have to save them from Gilgamesh that she can't concentrate on the fight in the moment. 
I can understand why Saber be uh, why Assassin would be pissed off about that. And maybe that is the trick. Maybe that's the trick for Saber to win this fight is to embrace the idea of uh, of just focusing on this fight, even if she has to use her all out and not worry about what comes after. Uh, you know. Maybe you should worry about co what comes after, but like maybe if you can't fully embrace this fight, then you'll never be able to win the long, long term. There's a debate there. <clears throat> Dashes. She gasps. Assassin's words are not to insult her, but... Oh boy. Something crazy is happening in the meanwhile. I can definitely see why that would, how that could shake her, though. The compound is burning. I mean, that's the question. Like, is giving in and giving her all in this fight the solution? That would be... That would mean that this is an exercise in trust for her. She has to trust Shiro... That, sh that their plan of Shiro being able to match um, Gilgamesh... That Shiro can do it without Saber's um, aid. And Saber knows that, you know, future Shiro certainly has that potential. Oh. Of course, there's a difference between trust and... Like, because, you know, Shiro, this version of Shiro, is he really strong enough to fight Gilgamesh? I can definitely understand the fear. Um, but then again, the counterpoint to that is that she's taken long enough at this point that if Shiro can't stand up to Gilgamesh, they might just be um, fucked already even if she catches up. So I think there definitely is an argument to trust that he's able to hold out and just focus on this fight. I don't know if there's much in her character that needs developing in that regard, but maybe. Um, you know, no, I guess so. Uh, is trusting others really a thing for her? I guess to an extent. Um, mm, I mean, she always had to take all the responsibility onto herself uh, as a king or whatever. Um, and so, and with Shiro, you know, she was fighting on Shiro's behalf, but... They haven't really built up trust as an issue for her specifically, but I guess I could see it being a subconscious thing. The compound is burning. Sounds of sword clashing and breaking. Oh, that sounds like Shiro's fight. Is the sound of battle between Gilgamesh and Emiya Shiro. Hey, that means you can rest easy knowing that Emiya didn't die instantly, right? Hmm. <laughs> Mm. It seems the banquet is at its peak. This is no time for you to be staying here, Saber. So hurry up and beat me. <laughs> Assassin. Assassin! She puts power into her arms. She puts magical energy into her sword to push her energy back. But she cannot do it. She can't truly give it her all. She will die when she does so. Hmm. And you can't die because... Because why? Because Shiro and Rin won't be able to do it without you? Maybe that's what you need to accept, is the possibility that you have to beat Assassin even if you die here. Although, what does that even win for you, though? Your whole goal, to be fair, your whole goal is to quickly beat Assassin so that you can help Shiro and Rin. If you don't have to help Shiro and Rin, then you don't really need to um, uh, quickly beat Assassin at all. I mean, obviously, there's benefits helping Shiro and Rin and destroying the Grail and all that. So you're on a time limit no matter what, but... Um... But, uh... If the after effects don't matter, if you're never planning to help Shiro and Rin, then you can potentially let yourself die. Not that you'd want to, but you could let yourself die in this battle against Assassin. Um... And it wouldn't necessarily matter. Ugh. So maybe this could be a double KO. That's an interesting thought. Maybe Saber gets taken out before even Gilgamesh. I'm doubting it. I think Saber will win this fight without uh, getting taken out, but that could be the, the the message here. I don't know, though. Is that really a good message for Saber, who normally is so... She's been so focused on her own, on, you know, erasing herself from being the king in the past, and now she put that wish aside. So, if anything, it should be more about wanting to not so easily embrace her own erasure. Just thoughts about Saber's arc in this uh, timeline. Because timeline one, there's a clear arc for Saber. Timeline two, she's been somewhat uh, of a background character by comparison. And not much of a clear arc in comparison. Now, you don't need to have a character arc to win an epic battle like the one against Assassin. But 
it seems like there's uh, clearly going to have to be some shifting motives based on how she's not focusing on this battle. Anyways, she will die once she does so. She will fall into Assassin's Trap once she gets away from him. <laughs> Kuh. She grits her teeth in frustration. She puts magical energy into her sword without a plan. <laughs> oh, don't think, just feel. Is that the saber way? Well, I guess. She has such good instincts. Then... Why the hesitation? There is only one thing for us to do. The swordsman's voice is clear. Assassin? Assassin? From the very beginning, we were only summoned to fulfill our roles. Yes, and your role is weird and I don't get it, but okay. You just want to fight Saber, right? As I protect this gate, you have something to protect as well. Wait, now you're acknowledging that her role is to protect? But if it's to protect, then that means she does need to get away from this fight. Um, I mean, maybe what you want is for her to, her to properly beat you, but will she be able to do that while she's thinking about what comes afterwards? Isn't that the whole thing you were just saying, assassin? <laughs> More or less, you implied it. Then there's nothing to think about. Unless you're saying she needs to protect something else. And Saber, you are not the only one who's in a hurry. Ah, right, because Assassin's not going to last very long, right? So, probably, well, how long is the whole world going to last if Gilgamesh's thing succeeds and if, you know, Pop goes the raisin, as it were? Um, maybe the idea is that he's going to fade, like, you know, even in a few minutes, but those few minutes may be too many and Saber needs to beat him even for those few minutes. So theoretically, Saber could this win, could win this fight by just playing defense the whole time and never, you know, trying to do anything fancy. Saber could just outlast him. Um, but, uh, it, it, if she's not thinking about what comes after, but, yeah. But that wouldn't be very honorable to assassin now, would it? And Saber likes to be an honorable fighter, right? Dashes. There's no lie in those words. Those are the first and last true words for the swordsman that fulfilled his role as a fictional character. I feel like every character in this visual novel fulfilled their role somewhat, but sure. I mean, some fulfilled it better than others, but I don't know. Hmm. That he would like for both of them to go all out on each other. Hmm. The swordsman in front of her is telling her his only wish, his only compensation for being summoned in this world. Hmm, yeah. I apologize for my impoliteness. We certainly do not have time. Okay, she's getting into it. She realizes the magical energy. She releases the magical energy in her sword. She no? What? The, mer the merciless force pushes his ass and back. Oh, releases. I thought she was releasing the energy she just put in the sword. She's about to whip out Excalibur, right? That's the idea. That's going all out, isn't it? The merciless force pushes his ass and back. He slides back about two meters. Saber does not move. Even though she's within Assassin's best range. Mm. She does not run up the mountain gate, nor does she charge an assassin. Mm. Because she has to whip out the big guns. She releases the seal. Yeah, this is her first time seeing Excalibur in this timeline, right? Because she never even... I mean, of course, she didn't whip it out against Shiro. She wouldn't have wanted to against future Shiro. Uh, and that was the first time she really had a good chance to since... Um, since making a contract with uh, Rin, so yeah. Showing her sword, Saber confronts Assassin. There is no hesitation in her eyes. She will use all her powers if need be. This feels a bit quick. 
Is Assassin going to be able to um, fight back against this? Because for Saber to just use this, win the fight, and that's it, feels like a little bit of a waste of the Assassin rematch. But for her to, you know, actually bring this out, I was... I think this could have gone a couple of ways. They could have um, dragged this out for a little bit longer, and then Saber could have essentially admitted defeat by being forced to use Excalibur, and used it, and won easily, but then not have it for the Gilgamesh fight. But by whipping it out this quickly, because um, they haven't really been fighting for that long, mm, I think the implication is that the fight keeps going after this, right? Otherwise, I think that's a little too a little, too little of uh, the Assassin Saber rematch. But we'll see. She'll use all her powers if need be. Her eyes state that she will use her strength to defeat the enemy in front of her. Dashes. There is nothing to talk about now. The fictional swordsman readies his sword. Is it still bent? Isa. Let us. He greets his greatest enemy with his strongest technique. And then back to Shiro? Yeah. She struggles through the sea of tainted meat. Okay, this is actually going to be Rin's perspective for a bit, I think. All right. So the fact that, yeah, given the circumstances, I'm pretty sure Assassin's going to survive that somehow. Because it seems like they're going to be doing this back and forth for a little bit. So I think they need to put Saber in a bit more of a hopeless situation, I would assume. They don't have to. But um, Saber winning this quickly would not would be kind of anticlimactic for a different reason. But anyways, she struggles through the sea of tainted meat. The lake isn't even a meter deep. Mm. Oh yeah, Rin, how are you dealing with that curse? Because, you know, that could, uh, that could be a thing that fucks you up, right? Chunks of flesh carpet the bottom. So she only sinks up to her knees. Uh, at least it's not getting uh, your any of your delicate parts. But ooh, grody. <laughs> Jeez, this is too disgusting. Uh, you volunteered. <laughs> oh, you're getting all your stuff up in Shinji's bits. She grumbles as she breathes hard. Every step brings a chill as if she's treading on piles of insects. Oh, that's fitting because the Montos have a bug thing. If she stops moving, the taint on her skin begins to solidify and consume her. Oh boy, yeah. Enough thinking about how gross it is. You just have to make sure you don't get consumed by the curse. Jeez, damn it. Uh, just fight through that curse, Ren. It shows how uh, determined she is, the fact that she even has made it this far, you know, and all she has is some slight annoyances, basically. <laughs> hey again, Zakuta, you catch my stream two days in a row. Well, it's a pretty, uh, pretty pivotal point in the narrative, so a good time to catch them. Oh, by the way, oh, I didn't do this at the start of uh, my recording. Uh, it's been a while, but um, thank you for Own Outer for following me. E-U-H-N underscore O-U-T-E-R. Thank you. They followed me between streams. Forgot to say that at the start of this one. But they did, so thank you. She shakes it off with all her might and keeps going. All right, all might. It is almost impossible to keep wading through the rottenness while still keeping her sanity. But she's succeeding. After this, even slaughtering a cow shouldn't be a big deal. Slaughtering a cow? When do you have to slaughter a cow? Do you have some special appointment that's going to involve cow slaughtering? Tosaka Rin thinks so defiantly. Or maybe you have, like, something against, like, cow slaughtering. Like, maybe you have some traumatic incident in your past that relates to cows. Like, maybe your daddy one morning, like, slaughtered a cow in front of you. And, like, you know, so that you could eat the meat uh, or something. And then it was like, oh, that's gross. I don't know. It just feels like a weird thing to make an analogy to. For no reason. So she's getting used to this work now. Do you slaughter a cow in in science class? Do you want to be a farmer when you grow up now? Are you are you casting aside your dreams of magic and you want to be fa a farmer? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do cows ever do? <laughs> she is so tense that she'll stop moving when she stops treating this at work as work. Mm. But at least there's no mental damage this way. Ooh, 
She's getting some fuzzies. Ha ha ha. But she cannot endure it with just willpower. Her temperature rises with each step. Oh boy. If she can't endure it with just willpower, and she's going to need to whip out some magic power, assumedly. The meat on her legs attacks her nerves instantly. Even if she flings it off, the poison has already entered her system. Ugh. Curse. The malice is almost tangible, and it feels like a disease. It only feels like a disease, which means it's not a disease, so that's good. Ugh. <clears throat> Then again, Rin, do you have experience feeling like feeling what diseases are feel, felt like? Because if you don't, how would you know what a uh, disease feels like to feel like it's such that it's a disease? Does that mean you've been sick in the past? I assume, you know, I thought magical people wouldn't get sick because they would just have their magics be like, get, get, go away, common cold. I magic you away. <laughs> I think slaughtering, slaughtering a large animal in general, a lot more mentally taxing than cutting a bunny, for example. Uh, I would agree. It's just weird that her mind went there specifically. The mouse is almost tangible and it feels like a disease. One will get sick when touched by it. It taints the nerve, takes away energy, boils the brain, and kills within one step. But you've already taken several steps. A normal person would stop moving after two steps and would fall into the sea of decay. But Rin Tosaka is better than normal. She does not know what happened after that. One with the decay, one with the flesh. She doesn't even want to consider whether she would be suffocated or absorbed into the poisoned flesh. Uh, by not wanting to consider that, you're already considering it on some level. And if um, considering that is bad and makes your bad thoughts that would make you give in, you should probably stop even considering that you wouldn't consider it. <laughs> uh. Her mind is too overcome with heat even to think about it. Oh boy, the fuzz. Man! She braces her staggering feet and keeps moving forward. Rin does not enter the pool of mud without a plan. Then what's the plan? Since when did you have a plan here? She swallowed two jewels and is using all the magic energy she had to defend herself. Oh! Oh, I see. Right. I think she had, like, two or three jewels left. I'm not sure if she used one against Gilgamesh or not. I still don't remember if that was a jewel usage. But, um, I guess this is the last of her jewels. So, it was definitely meaningful that she kept some left over after, um, the caster fight. And I like that they're being, uh, utilized here. But, okay. Alright. So, it wasn't just willpower alone. I like that a lot. That she's not just, I am so determined, so of course I can do it. I like that. I like that she had a real, okay, I'm gonna jewel up. Nice. Swallowed two jewels. Mm. Magical jewel coat aura. All right, I like it. If this curse is a crystallization of pure magical energy, she should be able to repel it with strong magical energy of her own. Mm. But how long will it last? What? Yeah, this is bad. Her vision wavers. Oh, hey, kind of like how the chunk of fleshy uh, Shinji me has been wavering the whole time. Her guess was right, but her scale was off. Mmm, she needed more jewels. Too bad she didn't save more. The small jewels are as good as paper, as a paper shield against the curse. Mmm. Well, at least they've made it so you haven't, you know, succumbed instantly, so that's a start. This is not something humans can fight against. A human, even. No human can ward off this curse. But you said earlier that, like, servants would be even more affected, or spirits would be even more affected, so if, if a human can't... If a human can't ward off the curse, but you said, oh, I'm not a spirit, so I can do it better, then what the fuck was the point of what you said? In here, one's belief in oneself is the only support of their life. Uh, uh-huh. Rin's got to keep believing, then. The belief that she got because she saw Shiro on those high bars. Or whatever it was. Jumping those bars. Uh, jeez. Jumping into a sea of fire is colder than this. Uh, have you... Do you have experience with jumping into a sea of fire? How would you know? <laughs> 
with her jewels protection, jumping into a sea of fire would be no problem. Maybe she has actually done it because of like curious training or some shit. As soon as she complains. Ooh. She thinks of Shiro's past. Yeah. Did she get a good look at that with um through future Shiro's memories, I wonder? Dashes. She gets angry at herself and sets her mind straight. Try not to talk too much about uh, other paths, if you would, Zakuto. Uh, just focus on the path in question or paths we've already done. Um, but uh, if there's a contradiction, I'll get to it when I get there and then be like, wait, that's a contradiction. And we can talk about it then, not now. That's what I'm saying. Try not to talk about that much now. This is a blind playthrough. Uh, so if there's a contradiction with a different, like, pathway that I haven't gotten to yet, try not to talk about it. Wise Fool's unfortunately not around today, but, uh, yeah. <clears throat> she gets angry at herself and sets her mind straight. It's not true. She cannot be complaining. She concentrate on the sounds behind her. She cannot see the two anymore. Mm. I guess there actually is definitely a large distance then. Or uh, either that or the curse is just obstructing her vision. Uh, you know, <laughs> they said like, oh, it's this much of distance away. But I'm really bad with uh, uh, units of uh, measurement and how much they actually mean in real terms. So when they say, oh, it's this far away, and she says, I can't see them, is that because it's that far away? Or is it because of the curse <laughs> obstructing the vision? She doesn't know if Shiro uh, moved the battleground away or if he's just cornered. Mm-hmm. Either way, it seems the fight has gone to the compound. Oh, they've been moving. Hopefully we'll be flashing back and see them as they move. <laughs> Just a bit more. I'll finish this quickly, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> Good to know I'm not the only one who's bad with uh, units of measurement. Um, like, visualizing in my mind what these units of measurement are, I'd have to, like, actually be there um, to get an understanding or be given a real, like, actual visual perspective um, to understand, but uh, generally. <clears throat> Seems the fight has gone to the compound. Just a bit more. I'll finish this quickly, so... Shiro dying off screen would be great. Like, even if it led to just a bad ending, Shiro being dead off screen for a bit and just finishing the bad ending on an interlude would be cool. I'd love it. Anyway, she runs. It's only as fast as walking, but she frantically moves her feet. She pushes her way through the tainted meat. <laughs> Taint. <laughs> meat. Her breathing ragged. She reaches out. Okay. She runs. It's only as fast as walking. She's ran faster than walking before, right? <laughs> I guess uh, in this meet, that's all it could be. Maybe before, she was practically just uh, crawling, but not crawling. Two feet crawling. Shimmying. But her walking was producing shimmying. Now is her running is producing walking. Her breathing ragged. She reaches out. <gasps> Got it! Did you get to Shinji? She climbs up. She can feel the mountain of meat. Ooh, yummy. Oh, it seems it's better here. <laughs> okay, it's better closer to the source? That's weird. I guess it's more infecting the lake, but maybe because it's around Shinji, and it has to keep Shinji safe, theoretically, for the grail to work, because Shinji is the grail. I guess that makes him safer. Mm. She lays on the pulsing ground. This feels even nastier, but the heat violating her nerves goes away. Mm. Wait, could this be... Could this be what? It's like Shinji's meat. What about it? Mm. That's Shinji's meat? I don't know, like, I'm not one for cannibalism, but I don't judge. Feels even nasty, nastier, but it doesn't, you know. 
It may um uh, socially feel nastier, but it doesn't actually feel not feel actually feel nastier. You know. <clears throat> Could this be? She puts her finger on the red ground. What is it? It's the same as the black mud, but it has form. So you're not like within the mud this time because you're standing on it. So that makes it better, I suppose. So of course, all along you did just need to turn into ice, like she was saying. What a failure! Or do some fly magic and fly over it. Fly magic's probably really hard, given that they talk about how, um, uh, you know, it's usually used for mundane stuff. So any magic that could let you fly would be pretty great. But uh, you know, <laughs> it's something that should not exist in this world. Something that came out of the Holy Grail and took form using magical energy. Servant. Servants? This is exactly like the servants. It it is? Oh. So you mean like the innards of the servants are all gross and stuff too? Like uh, like the mud? Hmm. Well, I know Gilly talked about how the... Um, uh, Gilly talked about how um, the, the all the servants are like what's filling the grail. But if that's what you mean by this is the servants, then what about the curses? Maybe this is like... The fact that the servant lost means it's filled with all of the hatred or negative emotions of the servant. Hmm. This is exactly like the servants. She murmurs in blank amazement. She tries to think what this could mean, but then stops herself. Oh, is it too grouty? This isn't the time. <laughs> you can ponder the logistics after, you know, you pull Shinji free of the thing. I mean, the logistics may actually matter for helping you pull Shinji free, but you can get there when you get there, I suppose. There's only one thing she must do right now. Alright, I'm rested. I'm gonna find Shinji and get out of here. She gets up and runs along the top of the mountain of meat. Mm. There's an island about 50 meters wide. Mm. 50 meters that sounds like a large distance again I'm, I'm bad at that kind of thing visualizing it if they don't give me an actual picture of point of reference but I will believe that that sounds big they said it's an island that that says more to me than saying 50 meters to be honest but <laughs> but an island about 50 meters wide she could not tell before for this lumpy meat is intertwined <laughs> <laughs> I came back. I see never see Shinji's meat mentioned in the chat ever again. <laughs> uh, found him. Within it all, Mato Shinji is there, hidden amongst the flesh. And now we go back to the Shiro fight? Yeah, okay. Nice! <laughs> he end up back here again? Is this laziness? Is this because this is where Saber fought Gilgamesh? So they already had the image of the scattered swords in that, from that pathway. So they just decided to reuse it for Shiro's fight with Gilgamesh. <laughs> Cause I thought, oh, hey, we're not gonna fight him in the exact same part. No, we're fighting Gilgamesh. It's a different person fighting, but they're fighting Gilgamesh in the exact same part. <laughs> oh, all right, go. I repel the oncoming swords. There are over ten noble phantasms, and every one of them has been released to destroy me. Uh, I'm looking at the ground, and if you're only counting ten, you gotta work on your math, Shiro. <laughs> Let's actually count, by the way. <laughs> uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight. I count at least like 30 swords that I can see in this image. Um, no, I can understand that, um, I think reusing stuff, uh, when, uh, I think reusing stuff smartly is smart. Uh, I will not, you know, I'll never fault any company for being lazy if there's a clever way to be lazy. I think that's very effective way of doing your visual assets. Um, this though, I was already thinking, really, we're gonna have our climax on the Rito Temple again, and it's Gilgamesh again, and then we fight Gilgamesh in the same area again, so it stands out to me. So it fails the refrigerator test in that sense? Oh. I throw away the destroyed sword and prepare for the next attack.
breathing. <sighs> Only one destroyed sword? Con which one? Concho or Bakuya? I catch my breath in an instant. Wow, is Shira actually going to beat Gilgamesh alone? That would be quite the accomplishment. I believe in him, but uh, it's going to be quite the accomplishment if he can. I know it's a different person fighting him. I am aware of Anim. I can't project with rain with ragged breath, and I'll just be skewered if I don't have a weapon. I mean, there's plenty of weapons all around. Pull one out of the ground. I guess they're kind of flimsy, but... Gah! This battle is not a battle against him. It's not? You're still fighting yourself, I suppose. It's a battle to prove future Shiro is not wrong. Wait, about you being able to beat him? This is a battle against my body. Oh, your limitations, you mean. Like, you're saying you should be able to beat him. Future Shiro could beat him easily, if that's the case. Uh, maybe, maybe Timeline 3 could put the money with their methods. But uh, if that's the case, then this is him saying, proving that he has what it takes to match Future Shiro's competence that he could beat him. I will die once the speed and precision of my projection go down. <laughs> There's no time to rest. Maybe that's a key to how we can win this. He's still not taking this seriously. He still has casual clothes and doesn't whip out his gold armor. He doesn't think he needs to take the fight serious enough to whip out his gold armor because there's no saber. Or he's not even fighting... A well, he didn't even wipe it, whip out his armor against Berserker. But I guess he didn't think that fight was serious either. But uh, this might be one of the strengths. Is that that gold armor, I assume, isn't just for show. I bet it actually has some good protective properties that could help him. But he's not whipping it out, which is going to give Shiro an opening, I would assume. It's a way for Shiro to take advantage of the fact that in a, maybe a more even fight where uh, he's wearing his armor, Shiro might lose. But he gets to win because of, you know... Just another uh, type of hubris that Shiro gets to exploit of Gilgamesh's all the hubris. <laughs> There's no time to rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, Shiro versus uh, Shiro's human frailness, and Gil isn't, Gil isn't wearing armor. Like Gil is willingly not wearing armor where he could be, whereas Shiro is just trying his best to not give in to his human frailty. It's like Gilgamesh is giving an opening, um, almost, he's almost inviting Sh Shiro, uh, giving him the potential to win the fight, as if Gil is saying, I can give you this opening and it won't matter. You, you as a fake can't keep up with the original, but uh, Shiro's gonna prove him wrong. In response to his voice, a strange sword points at me. Oh? The loaded noble phantasm is released at fatal speed. Which one? Torres. Which sword, I wonder? Oh, I can't see the history with the graphics! Ah! I think I recognized um, Alter uh, past Galaburn, like not normal Caliburn, but the one from the Cursed Tree. Was that what it was, I think? <laughs> Trace, off or on? What are you gonna do? Off, right? Because on would be strengthening. No, it can't be that, because Archer said Trace on, didn't he? When he summoned a bunch of those weapons and had them all attack Caster, didn't he say Trace on? I don't know if I can know how that worked. I don't know how the tracing off and on works. Hopefully they explain it. I want them to explain it. I like understanding how that shit works. But anyways, good. Unable to deflect the full impact, I fall to the ground. I quickly roll to the side and get up, steadying myself. Okay. What did he fling at you exactly? Is it any special sword? <laughs> what is wrong? Your quality is going down. You can't even call it a replica if it'll break in one blow. That sword, uh, the one directly to the left of him with a fancy golden hilt. Uh, black hilt, but it's got like gold on the hilt, but then black extension. Anyways, that one reminds me, but I think no. I think the one from the cursed tree is a little more golden all around. I could be wrong. It's been a while, but... Anyways, your quality is going down. You cannot even uh, call it a replica if it'll break in one blow. He laughs. Mmm, he laughs. Shiro, clearly you need more determination. However, for the time being, um... I'm oh, really getting there. Yeah, sure, we can save over this one. It's not a choice. That's a long fucking comment I made. <laughs> oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Come on, Shiro. 
take advantage of his hubris. His petard is showing. That's not how that works, but whatever. Did I spell hubris right? I don't know. I don't know how to spell. I'm just going to say hubris. I'm sure that's wrong, but I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Alright, yes. We are going to intermission here, though. So, Shiro, will he beat Gilgamesh? Find out in five seconds on Dragon Ball Z if you're watching on YouTube. Your petard is showing would make a great pre-mortem one-liner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I know it doesn't really work. But it sounds neat. <laughs> um, random question. Once you get through FSN, would you be interested in looking at FGO servants? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'll probably want to delve into other Fate media. I don't know enough about Fate Go. Is that the mobile game? If it is, I don't normally engage in mobile. I'm sure, like, if it's anything like Fire Emblem Heroes, it could, like, pull from any which what of the media, but... So, I don't know, that's very tentative. Probably not, but I won't give it a definitive no yet. Um, anyways, though, the fighting. Gilgamesh, he's laughing. He's obviously enjoying this. There's no way for me to defend myself if he releases all the noble phantasms behind him. But he releases them one by one as if to test how much I can take. Uh. <laughs> I see. Again, that's even more Pertard. He's showing even more Pertard than I realized. If he had launched them all at once without Shiro whipping out the reality marble, which he obviously hasn't yet, um, yeah, Shiro would probably be in big trouble. But by doing one at a time, Shiro can actually keep up. Not enough to actually um, win the fight, clearly, but uh, he hasn't died yet. So yeah, Gilgamesh probably could have ended this already, but Shiro needs to have his character realization so he can whip out the reality marble and then catch Gilly off guard, which Gilly is giving him the opening to do, like a foolish fool. Fgo is a gotcha, yeah. <laughs> mm. You can just look at JPEGs? I mean, I don't know. Um, I, that just sounds... I don't know if I'd want to do that. Um, I don't know. I'll think more on that, like, uh, so he's petarded? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I'll look more into it. I'll think more about if I might want to do that, um, you know, after I get through the whole game or as I'm closer to, at the very least, I know the third timeline, but, um, <clears throat> for now, uh, for now, I'm, it's definitely not a definitive yes, but I won't say definitive no either. Eh. Anyways, there's no way for me to defend myself. He releases all the noble phantasms behind him. He releases them one by one as if to test how much I can take. <laughs> what a, what a petard. <clears throat> <sighs> but that's what's keeping me alive right now. It's too hard to project a weapon after seeing it, even with Tosaka's backup. Well, you don't have Tosaka's backup right now. I can only imitate the shape. I can't construct the ability inside of it, so it gets destroyed with one blow. <laughs> Why did he say that? <laughs> what, Future Shiro? Say that you could do it? Or are you talking about something Gilgamesh said? He said I'm the only one who can beat him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you really have the will to be a superhero, if you've got. <laughs> Maybe Future Shiro is just testing you. But. Mm. I mean, even Rin talked about it, the fact that. Uh, you're a good counter for him. And like, it's because of the reality marble, right? So you haven't whipped that out. Maybe Shiro's still questioning that and that's why he hasn't whipped it out. Possibly. Or maybe he hasn't figured out, he, he has to try it clearly, but he hasn't even maybe thought of what trying it would involve. Cause clearly before now he hasn't, you know, been given a chance to test the reality marble. Hmm. This is all I can do. I can't rush at him after I block his attack. Mm-hmm. It's definitely much different facing a fully powered Gilgamesh, even if he's taking things casually, than taking a, uh, a future Shiro that's at, like, a fraction of his normal strength. Two. I'll at least need two weapons. 
But I'm having trouble projecting one weapon, so it's impossible to project two at once. At least this is kind of realistic of how I think Shiro would be faring in a fight like this. But, uh, but is the reality marble going to make that big, much big, much big of a difference? Much big? Or is something else? Hmm. And if it is, exactly what about that will give him such an advantage? Hmm. 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 What, so you just talk, faker? <laughs> I mean, we already know. <laughs> it's interesting that he's using the English word. I'm kind of curious about that now. We already know that, um... We already know that, you know, the reality marble, the whole reason they even did the transference of Ren's thing was because of the reality marble. So we already know that's where it's going, so I wonder how long they're gonna, you know, beat around the bush, as it were. Uh, let me check something. Um, English to Japanese. I wonder what word they produce if I say faker. Faker. They say gizosha. <laughs> Counterfeiter. Uh, that works. What if I say in kana? Feka. Is that... Can I... Hmm. Let's see. I would need to use katakana. Give me a second. Feka? Is that a word? Feka. Nope. Maybe? What if I go fe, fe, feka? He might just be using an English word. I'm trying to figure out if this is a real word or not. Faker. I think it is. Feka. I was doing it wrong because I was doing feka instead of feka. Which was my bad. I want to see on G-Show if that's a real word now. No. It, eh, it's like ambiguous if it's a word at all. But <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, I'm just trying to find out if it's a real English word or a made-up English English. <laughs> is it actually him saying English or is it like real English? I need to differentiate them somehow in my head. <laughs> hmm. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, feka, it sounds like a 100% English word. Sure, but I've heard plenty of other English words in the past that I thought, oh, that's just them doing English. But then I found out it's a real word they use in J Japanese all the time. It's a loan word. So I, I sometimes wonder, and I think that's a real English word that he's saying, but anyways. Mm. What do you think about servant class names? Um, like you mean assassin, archer, I think those are actual English, right? Assassin, Archer, Saber, Berserker. I'm pretty sure those are actual English. It's just interesting. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So you just talk, faker? I'll make you eat those words. <laughs> Eventually. He must have uh, liked seeing me roll around as he looks delighted. Yeah, I would roll around, especially if we're referencing Sonic Adventure 2. He looks delighted. The jerk. Ah. I catch my breath. It's fine as long as he's enjoying this. Because that means he won't go all out, right? There's still a chance for me to win. Torres. Oh. Mm, at least you're, you're having self-confidence enough that you think there's actually a chance to win. I look within myself. A limited circuit. I mentally lay out um, as many blueprints as I can. Mmm. <laughs> Japanese ma mages in Japan. Seiba, Raida, Ransa, Acha. But, uh, yeah. In English, um, Saber, Rider, Lancer, Archer. I can see 17 noble phantasms behind him. I read the structure from its appearance, draw out the concept of creation, select the composition material. Oh boy! I'm overloading. He's overloading. Rin, give me some more energy. <laughs> give me your energy. Gah. That would be a chew, not a cha. That's <laughs> a cute, <laughs> I vomit blood. It's because I'm putting multiple blueprints inside a circuit that usually handles one or two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what the second line means. Normally you would have had uh, the second line inside like the green lines where you sometimes have like one where you get like caliber and that's one in timeline one. You got the second so you can get Kancho and Baku at the same time. But now you're like overloading the lines where you normally get two so you can do a bunch at once. You did a bunch at once against Archer when the reality marble was up but I'm guessing that's a 
testament to the reality marble because that lets him maybe utilize his magical energy more efficiently uh, or something like that oh. and it works for future shiro and past shiro i would assume is what gave him an edge there and he could made him do it that way as it do that that they it's because i'm putting multiple blueprints inside a circuit that usually handles one or two my nerves are bruised since i started projection and my body's being destroyed from within my throat tries to pump out the blood that is filling my stomach Possession experience. Sympathy complete. I swallow it and continue with the process. You swallow the blood? Ooh. Kancho and Bakio cannot block his noble phantasms. Not alone. Archer should be able to with his technique, but I don't have that much skill. Hmm. There's only one way for me to block the noble phantasms. You need to match them. You need to offset them with the same exact ones. I still have enough magical energy. There's enough supply from Tosaka. Alright, keep going, keep going. It's overloading a little, so just kind of try to do it somewhat in moderation. The circuit of channel is about to break. Uh, yeah, if you're trying to channel them all at once, that's too much for your 30 capacity. As they were talking about, it has to be refilled over and over. You can't just overload all at once. The end is near. When he gets serious, I have to project the same number of noble phantasm as him to stay alive. <laughs> the end is near? Well, some people might have wished that the end was mellow. <laughs> I have to project the same number of noble phantasm as him to stay alive. Sorry for the delayed joke. <laughs> Originally, I was thinking about it, and then I'm like, no, I want to stay serious in the moment. But then it was nagging at me, so I had to say. Anyways, my body will die if I project that many. Roll out. Bullet. Clear. I saved the overflowing images. Oh, this is a new thing. Okay. When he gets serious, I have to project the same number. My body will die. Roll out. Bullet. Clear. I saved the overflowing images. So you can copy and paste for later, maybe? Maybe that's what the... I think I was, like, musing about that idea earlier. That that's what the um, reality marble was all about is that it's like basically all of the stuff copied that's the unlimited blade works and so you can just pull on them infinitely without using magical energy to keep cre creating them you just have to call on it like you summon it essentially is that what you're trying to do now just from scratch i saved the overflowing images the overflowing swords are ones that will pierce me from within mm. Also, roll out bullet clear. I think you said that in Japanese. I'm like trace on and off what you say in English. Emi Ashiro will be pierced from within if the circuit cannot be controlled. Hmm. Oh, Oh, interesting. He uses Nana instead of Shichi. You made a lot this time. Ju, Jugo, Ju Nana. I see. You produced all the noble phantasms you can see. <laughs> yep, uh, uh, a total of Ju Nana. Mm. Or Ju Shichi. Lancer, I remember he used Shichi. Because I remember I learned, I, as I was learning them, I just stuck with. Four is Yon, and seven is Nana, and ignore the fact that four can also be she, and seven can also be Shichi. Um, but Lancer said Shichi, which threw me off, um, and uh, and so it stuck sticks out to me that Lancer is the blunt type that will use Shichi, but uh, I guess Gilgamesh is more laid back, so he goes for Nana. Or maybe it has to do with the fact that he's more modernized. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about it, but it would seem to me like she and Chi Chi would have been the thing back in the day, and they would have started to drop them over time, do superstitions, and try to replace them with Yon and Nana in more recent times. I might be making that up, but that sounds like it could be a thing, and if that's the case, maybe it's because, you know, Lance is from way back when, whereas Gilgamesh, he is from way back when, but he's been corporealized for ten years, so maybe he adopted Nana. I just enjoy uh, musing about uh, the Japanese history, even when I don't know the full extent. Mm. And musing about Japanese language. <laughs> you reproduced all the noble phantasms you can see. Nani? 
魔術師の手の内など完パできなくて何が英霊かお前に働く魔術の数などそれこそ手に取るようにわかる Do not take me lightly What sort of hero would I be if I could not see through a magus? I can easily tell how many spells you're working on All simultaneously Dashes His words are unexpected Well, that means he's taking you somewhat seriously. He's actually paying attention to you. Not seriously enough to whip out his golden armor, but uh, he's paying attention enough to you to uh, note that at least. The king of heroes that possesses thousands of noble phantasms can figure out my magic just by looking at me? Mmm. Then let me grade them. <laughs> he's really having fun of this. Grade the quality of the imitations using his real versions. Yeah. Let me grade your forgery's quality. Mm -hmm. Well, I will not any allow any one of them to stay in this world, no matter how good they may be. <laughs> no matter how good the imitation, it'll never live up to the original. Uh. And Shiro, I guess that's the whole point, is for Shiro to prove that wrong. Even though the wish of wanting to save people is not his own, he's imitating it from Kiritsugu. I guess by proving to Gilgamesh that the his fake weapons can surpass Gilgamesh's real weapons, it's allowing himself to say to himself that his fake dream can be just as real and surpass the real dream of Kiritsugu. That's a fun through line, I suppose. Um, I still need to have explored a bit more of self-worth within the Archer fight, if that was what they were going for. In fact, even if that is the through line here, I think they can very much have had Shiro explore some self-worth in the Archer uh, in the Shiro off, as it were, before getting into the, getting to the Archer off, where then they focus on um, forgeries beating imitations. He could have potentially discovered some self worth without needing to, um, w without countering the idea of that. Oh, he's just a forgery, so he'll never live up to Kiritsugu. Oh. Still, I can see the through line. Cool. <laughs> I love that snapping. Snaps every time he goes for the attack. I love it. My reaction is delayed. His words caught my attention, creating a hopeless delay. <laughs> Talking is talking's better than a free action. It gives you an extra action over your opponent. Uh, don't get distracted. <laughs> Catch them while they're monologuing, as they say. As uh, Who says it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Syndrome? The 17 noble phantasms are released. King's treasures, a fraction of them charge in as to tell me playtime is over. Up until now he's doing, been doing one at a time, just fast. But now he's going a bunch at once, huh? We're leveling up. Can you keep up now that Gilgamesh is leveling up? I mean, what, you couldn't learn enough English to say all this in English too? Freeze out, sword bullet full open. What are you doing? What do those words mean? Sword bullet. <laughs> that's funny because that's the archer that would make you an archer. It's a sword bullet. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I remember thinking how it's weird in Tumblr 1 how, you know, Shiro's like, oh, you're like an archer, but they didn't really go into his archery thing. They went more into swords. And here, you know, they still didn't really go into this archery thing, even though now we know that he ends up classified as an archer in the future. So, and he has a real bow, bow and arrow he can whip out too. So, uh, he probably is just imitating that, but... I wonder if they're going to go more full into the archery in Timeline 3 because, you know, that would go in line with maybe Ayako and Sakura being more involved because they're in the archery club. Fingers crossed. Uh, I like Ayako and Sakura. Um, and also, I feel like the narrative has to show them more given what they've teased, but... Ah. His English teacher would be ashamed and hungry. <laughs> Definitely hungry if she wasn't passed out right now. Conveniently, so that the comic relief uh, can't get in the way of the serious scenes. Sword bullet full open! Gah! My body wavers. Oh, I love those crashing sounds. That's new. Oh, I can just visualize it. Nice. The sword shooting forward and the sword's created from within me. Crash and shake the surroundings. Gaga! I can't block all of them. But you have 17, so you should be able to block 17. 
Even if I've rejected 17 noble phantasms, I can only give form to them one at a time. Mmm, I see, so you did copy, so now you're like pasting them one at a time, okay. Even if I can form them in succession, I'm no match for him as he, he can release all of them at once, and he they don't even break instantly. <laughs> You're holding well with your fragile works. <laughs> your fragile blade works? But you should not be able to last more than a few more blows. I mean, while we're talking, there's been a few more blows. Come on, you need to... <laughs> Come now. You need to hurry or you'll die. I hear him laughing behind the swords. Laughter behind his words. Twelve more enemy noble phantasms. Can you copy them all at once? But you sure are foolish. You know you cannot beat me, so you try to regain the Holy Grail. Excuse me? He's trying to regain the Holy Grail? He's trying to destroy it. That decision is correct. You're not, um, you are not even a match for me. Are you saying Shiro should go after the Grail and skip fighting Gilgamesh because he's not good enough to face you, and there's nothing more to it? I don't think Shiro actually wants the Grail for the purposes of beating you, although I guess he could use it for that. You're not even a match for me. <sighs> ah, dashes! My fingertips are burning. The magical energy I emit and the heat from the crashing old phantasms burn my fingertips mercilessly! Mmm. <laughs> I can just imagine now. Uh, I think about, I've been thinking about this a lot, but because this is sort of like, I feel like the first timeline of Fate Stay Night, even though Fate Zero is a prequel, the first timeline of Fate Stay Night feels like such a, it feels like a very fulfilling sequel to Fate Zero. It follows up on, you know, Kirei and, you know, his beef with uh, Kiritsugu, and it follows up on the, uh, you know, the, uh, the interrupted uh, battle between uh, Saber and Gilgamesh, and like, you know, stuff like that. And now Timeline 2, with uh, the anime adaptation uh, of Unlimited Blade Works being done by the same people that did Fate Zero, a lot of people will take that as just the sequel. I believe Blind Wave did. Um, I plan to watch their reactions eventually, of course, but uh, if you do that, and it, depending on how uh, normally this is adap adapted, instead of it being like, Oh, Saber will get to fight Gilgamesh. It's like, oh, suddenly Shiro fights Gilgamesh. And Kirei just gets killed by his Lancer. Oh, okay. It just feels a little, uh, uh, thinking about it. <laughs> it's like, it was never meant to be a sequel. It was a prequel, but it works so good, Timeline 1 does, as a sequel, which lets the ti uh, Timeline 2 do more explorative stuff. And yet, um, with the Unlimited Blade Works anime, it's more taking itself as a sequel. So I, I wonder if they change much to... Uh, allow for it to feel more smooth, or if they just let it feel kind of uneven. Ah. The magic energy I emit and the heat from the crashing old phantasms burn my fingertips mercilessly. Seven more noble phantasms. But then why not just kill Shinji? Ah, uh, now we're preying on the fact that he wants to be a hero. I'm surprised Gilgamesh is going there. Mm. <laughs> I do actually find these uh, weapon clashing in the background to be very, very soothing. Seihaiを止めたいのであれば、真珠を始末することこそが確実だ。魔術師であるお前たちならば。Oh, are you just now actually pondering this? It's because he wants to be a hero. <laughs> I wonder what you have to think about that. <laughs> uh, a monger like you could never be a hero, but he does become a heroic spirit, so... Although you think of the future version as a faker, too. It's a sure way to stop the Holy Grail. I'm sure you two had a way to kill him without going across the mud. Uh, Rin would have had some kind of projectile weapon, yeah. The question is, would you have a way to save him without going across the one mud? And that's definitely a lot harder. Gil is the king of heroes. Ah! <laughs> He's not being very heroic right now, but sure. I know Hero is in the eye of a holder. I'm sure he did plenty of heroic things while he was alive. And he's just being kind of a dick in the moment, but... <laughs> hmm. 
I mean, he is kind of a kind of. Shinji is a bit of a shitbag, so it seems weird to want to save him. Definitely. Um, it's 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 more than just being a regular hero. It's being a superhero. You know, not even not even letting the bad guys die as long as you can save them. Which means you have to not kill Gilgamesh, right? If you want to be a proper superhero, you shouldn't even kill Gilgamesh, right? I mean, I guess he's gonna die anyways in the Grail. No, it won't. He's already become a real boy, right? Or is he like a- do you count him as something weird because he's one with the Grail's goopiness, so is he just far gone evil at this point and you have to kill him? But not necessarily, because he's been powered- I guess you wouldn't know this unless you subconsciously know this- but he's been powered by the uh, Kirei's orphans the whole time. That's what's giving him the strength to fight. Otherwise, he would be alive, but wouldn't necessarily be um, fight worthy. So if you can just uh, bide your time until he runs out of orphan juice, then um, theoretically, he wouldn't even have to kill Gil. <laughs> Such hypocrisy to try to save him, as expected from a mongrel. Ha! Ha! It's burning out. My circuit is completely burning off. I don't have enough. I can't match this man with this small circuit. Damn, why? Why can't I block them? He said I can beat him, so why am I not even a match? <laughs> why do you care so much about what your future self said? I thought you were trying to fight back against your future self. <laughs> I know you were taking his pain as a lesson, but I guess he did save you in the moment. <clears throat> but still, you're being tied to him in the way that you were tied to Kiritsugu. But, uh, you know, if you want to surpass that version of yourself and take the dream as your own, um, or prove that the imitation can surpass the reality, then instead of asking questions, you should provide answers without even, uh, without even needing the questions to be asked. Preemptively answer the question, metaphorically speaking. Does that mean I'm making a mistake? Oh, doubt, self-doubt. <laughs> You're doubting that you can do it. Maybe that's, are you accepting that future Shiro could be wrong? Cause he definitely could have been wrong. He's you after all, and you're Shiro, and Shiro's definitely wrong. Ah, ah. Noble phantasms. Do my body last until I block them? No, I should be thinking about the difference between my projection and archers. I mean, his are definitely better. No! Oh. Huh? All senses freeze at that instant. Did he just stop because of some special reason, or... Or is time freezing for you because of a fancy Shiro moment? I don't even pay heed to the three approaching blades. What? The Golden Servant is taking out a sword. Huh? A strange sword. Is it his version of Caliburn, or is it Ea? My mind burns up the instant I see it. You said you will save the girl, right? The girl as in Rin? The girl as in Elia? Which one? Hmm. He laughs while the sword roars. I believe that's Ea, but I... Yeah, that looks too different from Caliburn. So that should be Ea, unless it's a completely different sword. I eliminate the three remaining blueprints in my circuit and concentrate on reading his sword. But... I can't read it? I was able to read every sword. <laughs> the girl, as in Shinji? <laughs> I mean, sure. I mean, Shinji's kind of, you know, he's a bit of a wuss. <laughs> he's a bit girly. <laughs> you said you will save the girl, right? <laughs> if we're talking about Shinji, I was, I did do a double take. I'm like, you mean Rin, Ilya? Oh, do you mean Shinji? <laughs> I was able to read every sword, but I can't even read that sword structure. I mean, yeah, if Gilgamesh is taking out uh, Ea against Shiro, it means that he's probably somewhat impressed to an extent. Or he's testing him even further. Can you read this, my ultimate sword? Naraba, see it. Then show me, show me what you can save with your imitations. Oh boy, a storm of chaos. Oh yeah, this does look like Ea. It's familiar. Um, oh boy, Saber wasn't even to even able to beat this with you know 
her Excalibur or, or whatever. She had to, you know, whip out... Maybe now with Excalibur she could match it better because she's, you know, got Rin's energy. Um, but she had to whip out um, Avalon. Shiro, though, doesn't even know to whip out Avalon because unless he's got subconscious timeline knowledge, he projected it against Kire to give him an opening in that fight. But in this fight, he shouldn't even know to do that. He shouldn't even know Avalon's really inside him. Um, even if he understands that he's subconsciously healing somehow. Mm. <clears throat> oh, he's very much a show of force. I mean, isn't everything with Gil, though? <laughs> mm. A storm of chaos. It's funny. Gil normally does a storm of swords, but now is the storm of chaos that isn't the swords and makes the thing that looks like Toby's eye swirl. The wind emanated, uh, emitted from his sword even blows away his ownable phantasms as it comes at me. But does it make the swords that he blows away a storm of swords? Ugh. Dashes. So many dashes. My mind is still blank. I can't come up with any countermeasures, so I just release the remaining magical energy within me, and you make a reality marble, so that what? What will that do? What will the reality marble do here? Will that somehow save you like a like Avalon would have saved you? Oh, okay. We're going to do the assassin fight first. Yeezo. Let us. I must say, I really enjoy these back and forths. I really enjoyed it in uh, Timeline 1, where it was the two-way uh, Shiro Kire uh, um, uh, Gilgamesh Saber. I, uh, I really liked that. I thought it was a great climax. Um, even though Avalon, the way it was uh, used to just completely nullify a uh, wasn't, in my opinion, it wasn't properly built up. But um, in general, I really enjoyed that climax. And I, I like this, too. I really love the, the back and forth. It helps to build tension, in my opinion. And this time, we went from a two-way to a three-way. I wonder if in Timeline 3, that means we get a four-way. <laughs> Let us. Tomato! And the swordsman readies his sword. The only stance for the man who does not have a stance. Sure. A fatal technique that cuts his enemy by simultaneously executing bloods from different blows from different angles. Oh, I'm sure that can totally keep up with Excalibur. I was assuming it would just get taken out easily. But uh, maybe uh, the game will prove me wrong. She has experienced the move before. Mm-hmm. The previous one had an arc to surround his enemy and a vertical slash. Uh-huh. That is why she was able to avoid it and live up to this day. Oh? Does that mean this version will be even stronger? Uh, I keep forgetting. What was this story's justification for assassin fighting Saber on somewhat equal grounds? Uh, I don't know. The technique works better when they're on equal grounds? Uh -huh. I was asking myself that question earlier in the fight anyways. <laughs> <clears throat> he doesn't have the high ground, though. He had the high ground earlier. He had to wait until they were no longer on the high ground. He had to wait until they were on even ground for him to use the technique. <laughs> Uh, and then Saber's like, of course, we're on even ground. Now we can use the technique. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I don't get it, but okay. That's why she was able to avoid it and uh, live up to this moment. But the real technique has three slashes. Oh, I see. She, he only did two last time. He was holding back. Mm. A circular slash and a vertical slash. And probably a horizontal slash that cuts anyone that escapes sideways. Hmm. There's nowhere to run if the three attacks are executed at once. Well, I mean, is it just about speed? Then sure, you're fucked. But also, your Excalibur is pretty darn strong. Once in range, the other two attacks will cut you even if one is blocked. Mm-hmm. One cannot escape sideways, and the longsword will reach out even if one retreats. It is a long sword, after all. More, uh, more science to the longness of the sword. What? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Demonic technique. Tsubame Geishi. 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 Tsubame Geishi. Geishi. A godly technique that even surpasses the servants. Sure, even though it's being used by a fake. Someone that's not even a servant. It's funny how there's a parallel between uh, Assassin being a fake and Shiro being a fake, but they're not fighting each other, so... I wonder if there's going to be any... I, I do wonder if they're, they're going to follow up on that in Timeline 3, or if it's just going to be coincidence. In which case, bad narrative. 
you you have clear chemistry potential. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, it'd be over too quickly. Then <laughs> you wouldn't have time to flirt. <laughs> uh, does that mean he also has hubris? Mm. Uh, more like he has honor, I suppose. Uh, but I guess honor could be a form of hubris if you're underestimating when you need to strike to not lose the battle. A godly technique that even surpasses the servants. The ultimate attack perfected by an anonymous swordsman using all his life. Anonymous swordsman apparently not named Suzaki Kojiro. There was just another guy named Suzaki Kojiro. Unless you're saying you're the anonymous swordsman, but you're not Suzaki Kojiro? If that is the case, I don't believe you said that. I thought you were some other third guy. Oh, fuck, I don't know. <clears throat> the long sword trembles. Oh, you had to go back to this song? I was liking the other songs. You went back to a boring fight song. <laughs> no, it's fine. The song is fine. Just if I had to rate all the fight songs, I'd rate this one pretty low down. His body moves in one step. The distance to attack Saber. Prison. Prison? Prison as in like he's going to send Saber to prison. Oh, pri no, prison like prison shape. I forgot what that was for a second. I forgot that was a thing. Prison like arcs are executed from a range that does not allow any defense. Oh boy. Oh, that's that's her uh, determined look. She had that look when um I remember her having that look against uh Gilgamesh, but I think she was facing the other direction. Dashes. Saber does not use her holy sword. But she already whipped it out. She cannot use her noble phantasm at this range. So what could you do? No matter how fast Saber may be assassin, Subame Gaishi is many times faster. Sure, but like oh, oh, oh. Even if, um, oh, weird. I'm just looking at something. That's weird. Um, <clears throat> uh, even if, uh, even if, even if, even if you, what do you mean you can't use it at this range? Sorry, that's what I mean. Your freaking Excalibur is super duper strong. It can go super long range. Maybe you want to get closer for a full fatality? I mean, Assassin's better up close, right? So wouldn't you want to back off? Or maybe you have to back off and that does make it stronger. And that's why you want to back off? Hmm. Her neck will be cut the instant she puts magical energy into her sword. Hmm. So, what do you do then? Too close of a range? Oh, is that what they're going for? Okay. Yeah, like, what do you do, though? If he's just um, better than you if he goes first, then how do you beat that? It takes time to activate? Oh, I suppose that's fair. Her only weapon is a pure technique. Hmm. What technique? Oh boy, the blade begins its arc. All right, time saber. If you have some way to do something, what are you gonna do? Like, I don't know how you beat this if he's just that fast. You have to have some way to block it. And if you can't block it with Excalibur, what can you do? She feels despair from its precision and speed. Such an attack. How much training was needed to get this far? Oh boy, the triple slice. I only see the double slice, but I'll believe there's triple. Fear is the only thing on her mind. It cannot be blocked. This technique is a technique of carnage that challenges God with mere human skill. Oh boy. Carnage? What about Venom? Mm hmm. Can't be blocked. Carnage challenges God. A oh, good thing that Saber is uh, not like. Not like Gilgamesh. Um, or, yeah, yeah, not like Gilgamesh or Hercules or anything. She doesn't have uh, God blood. <clears throat> uh huh. Only God would be able to block it, but you are not a God. Challenge is God? But you're a mere human, question mark? <sighs> huh? She gulps. There is a flash as small as a grain of sand. She does not think about what it is, nor if it is correct. Okay. She risks everything she has in her instinct. Okay. That is something you're good at. You do have an instinct that's supposed to be, uh, 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 A. A is a good level. <clears throat> oh, there's the third slash! Ah! That, is that what the instinct was? The third slash came late? She charged at her victory with all her might. What did the fictional swordsman think of that? What did he think of that? What did she do? What happened? Did he not die? Did she not die? Did she live? Is she... Did he die? Did she... Did, did they both die? Or is it both over? Did they make out? <laughs> Silver armor passes through the gap between his arm. Mmm, his arm? Oh, she ducked under him? 
and the time it would have taken to make his third strike, which normally, oh, that's a neat idea, and the time it would have taken to make the third strike, normally they close in around you. If he can duck in bef while, while he's forming it, that's true, I, and then she can get behind and hit him with Excalibur. But at the same time, if she has the time to do that, can't she just get behind and hit him with air? Uh, not air, sorry, her air, her invisible air. Maybe it wouldn't be enough to finish him in one blow, I suppose. But <laughs> the armor passes through the gap behind his arm. The opening between the swordsman's left arm and his waist. Saber must have figured out that that small opening is the blind spot of the technique. Okay. Even though the attack is still chips off her armor. Uh-huh. Saber curls up and flies through the opening. An exquisite skill that is only possible with precognition, her great instinct. Uh-huh. She was able to predict the true Tsubame Gaishi since she experienced it once. Uh-huh. But she only saw two strokes back then. Um, and she escaped with an opening of the third stroke. So she used the same third stroke opening because the third stroke took a while to form this time too? Because that's just a deficiency of the technique? Is that the idea? Oh... Or, if the, uh, yeah, fourth swing, yeah. If the idea is that you have to go horizontal, vertical, and then diagonally, you can only do one diagonal. There's a second diagonal that will be an opening in that idea. The, theoretically, there should be four to do a full enclosure, as it were. To use a go term, there should be four for a full enclosure. She was able to predict the super, blah, 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 experienced it once. But that is not the surprising part. Oh, yeah? Which is the surprising part, then? It is her determination that kept her alive. Oh, that's, that's big. Undertale vibes. Rin has determination, Shiro's determination, and Saber's got her de determination because of Shiro, because of future Shiro, and seeing how he ended up, and how past Shiro managed to fight back against future Shiro. Is that the determination, I wonder? Hmm. Oh. She trusted her insight and put all her power into the slight opening. Okay. She shook off the fear that she would be slashed if she was even a moment late, and charged into the small opening. Okay. She'd be slashed even a moment late. Okay. Therefore, art thou? Her determination is the strength that defeated the demonic technique. Okay, it's all about that determination. Clearly, Saber has a decent amount of determination. Ren seems to have determination. Shiro's the one with lacking determination. Well, that's what he needs more of. Well, he's determined to make the dream come true when he was challenged on it against future Shiro. But, you know, being determined about it in a vacuum is something he definitely needs to work on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hi -ya! But the match isn't over yet. Okay, good. I was thinking that was a bit soon. Even though the Tsubame Gaishi was avoided, her enemy is right beside her, and she charged in with speed quicker than the attack. Mmm. <laughs> Natsu stretching his speed to the moon. That's fitting, because fate's day, night of the moon. <clears throat> it is not easy to recover her stance from such a charge. Uh, but she needs to recover the stance to properly do the Excalibur attack, I suppose. That is fitting, I suppose. Uh-huh. Her enemy is right beside her. Um, if she had the wind scar attack, if she was just using the wind blade right now, she could probably do her wind scar faster than she could use the Excalibur, which is again why I'm like, that might be enough to, you know, beat him. I mean, I suppose at that point you would run away and keep him alive, which is unhonorable, but it might be better to beat him. I suppose he wouldn't have whipped out this technique, though, unless he saw the, saw your better technique or you running away. So I guess that's fair, but, mm. Mm. Determination is determination, which is deterministically determines Saber's determination. Sure, de deterministically. That's a word. I believe it. It is not easy to... I actually don't believe it, but I will believe it for the memes. Maybe it is true, in which case, Legasp. It is not even to recover, easy to recover a stance from such a charge. Oh, he's jawing! The long sword strikes. The attack is the quickest, even if it may not be as quick as the demonic technique. Oh, the attack already ended, so now he's got a fourth attack. You can't just do the three attacks again? Mm, I guess he would need to set up the stance again. Deterministically not random? Is that a real... Okay, is that a real word? Oh, wait. Okay, now I'm going to break from everything. I wasn't going to, but now you're making me doubt myself. I know what it would mean theoretically, but is it a real word? Deterministically. Is that a real word? Um, okay. Google is not telling me it's wrong, so I guess it's a real word. All right. The attack is the quickest, even if it may not be as quick as the demonic technique. But, demo, shikashiwa. Oh boy. Oh boy. Her attack is a bit quicker than his. Her attack is? Her Excalibur attack she need to charge? So even though her stance were off tilter? Even though his long sword is quick? Her attack is still quicker? Even though she he's supposed to be quick? 
And the whole problem with her is that she was not being quick enough with the Excalibur? Okay. Alright. Is Does it end like that? Oh, she was quicker to duck. Maybe that was it. She ducked. I could see that. She ducked faster than he could slash. Hmm. <laughs> Even if his attack was faster, she could have ducked fast enough to get his attack, her attack through. I think I could see that being a thing. Gunna! Uh-huh. Oh, there's a slash of blood. He's felt things like that before, though, from Caster, so I think he could take it. He closes his mouth. It is with Excalibur. This is our first time seeing Saber use Excalibur not as some big final smash, but use it kind of sparingly just for, like, a close and personal slash. So it probably doesn't have as much power as it could, like, you know, when she used it against, or when she wanted to use it against Berserker, when she actually used it against Ryder or against Gilgamesh, etc., etc. Um... Assassins and Berserker, or, I mean, <laughs> she did, She ended up using Calibern, ultimately, to do the a blast, as it were, against uh, Berserker, but, um, mm. yeah, um, it's a regular slash with Excalibur, but does that mean it will finish him off, though, is the question. He closes his mouth. Still, though, <laughs> it's funny that it takes all the way till now to see her use a more humble uh, <laughs> attack with Excalibur. He closes his mouth. He shuts his lip tight. Ugh. Ugh! Tight, tight shut. And tenses up. Tenses because it's tight, so that he will not fall down. Blood from his lungs fills his mouth. Mmm, tasty. But he swallows it so that it will not spill out. It's always been Excalibur, though. She just turned invisible air off. I mean, sure, but the thing is, like... That's something I was confused about in the past. But yeah, even if it's always been Excalibur, it's clearly been weaker while it's been invisible. The invisible air has clearly been making the... I mean, I thought the implications that it was. Because if the invisible air was not making it weaker, then it was there was literally no point for her to unsheath it if she wasn't going to do the Excalibur blast. So I'm pretty sure it was making it weaker. And by unsheathing it, she is using up more energy. Um, uh, therefore, there is merit, theoretically, to her... Uh, unsheathing the air. If not, and there's no merit, then there's no merit, so there's no point. But, um, anyways, he swallows it so that it will not spill out. <clears throat> uh, ah, uh, yes, that's the point of the sheath. So what, the air is the sheath? She's fighting with a sheath the whole time, in a way, I guess. <laughs> oh no, don't fight with your Shiro like that! Shiro's your sheath! Uh, to use the metaphor from Timeline 1. But anyways, the golden hair girl is below him. The way of the swordsman does not allow him to dirty her with his blood. <laughs> uh, how nice of him. <laughs> Dashes. Is it over? Saber does not say anything. Her golden hair flutters down to the ground. Okay. Hmm. Assassin looks pretty, uh, pretty fucked up. His eyes are like, whoa. Maybe, uh, they also could be an enjoyable fucked up. I could see that. It is a wonder that her, uh, that her head is still attached. Her head? Don't you mean his head? Well, I guess he did do a quick slash that he dodged. She dodged, I suppose. It is a miracle that her limbs are still attached. Mmm. She felt that her body would be slashed the instant she went into that opening. But she wasn't. That was the only difference. What was? She felt that she might have lost, but still went for it anyways. Whereas Assassin maybe was unconfident because his fatal three-strike attack was dodged. The longsword. The swordsman's technique would have stayed invincible if his longsword had not been bent. Oh! Okay, we're going to come back to that. The sword's been bent this whole time. And because it was bent, she just barely dodged. I think that's kind of a cute detail. All right. Um... I still don't know that um, that it being bent was necessary. It seems like it was clearly a downside, and he was saying, yes, I did bent my sword, but it meant that we're now on level playing ground, which matters for my technique, because, because if, if, be oh, because if we weren't on level ground, then you would have either a lower up ground, you would have a lower ground or a higher ground to either run down or jump up to potentially dodge the technique. I guess that's the reasoning. But, uh, <laughs> I, f I feel like there are 
I feel like if they want an excuse to bend his sword for this ultimate um, thing, there could have been a better way to do it. But uh, <laughs> I get it. It's it's neat. Is that it? Is the fight over? The air is shaking. Mm. Settled it really quickly. Is that all, all Assassin had to give then? Another battle is still going on behind the mountain gate. Uh-huh. Sass took a calculator risk, but he's bad at math. <laughs> I think also he just more enjoys the battle. He doesn't really care if he wins or loses. Dashes. Nope. Ellipses. Unsure of what to say, Saber looks up at the dying swordsman. To that. You can go. Of course. Like I thought, he's not going to be salty or anything. He just wanted to enjoy the battle, and he did. But it seemed like the battle went pretty quick. Um, I could have seen this going on for longer, honestly. Um, I'm not fully disappointed. It was nice that... I Okay, I do like... I like the bent sword. I like that... I mean, I think that the way they bent it could have been better. But I like that that was the tipping point. It wasn't just, oh, Saber dodged, so now Saber wins. It was um, Assassin still had a follow-up. And because of the bent sword, she was able to dodge when she should have normally died. I like that. I like the through line of the fight, though. I think um, there could have been something better to how the sword was bent in the first place. Though it being bent as the, as the key was nice. The swordsman tells her without looking at her. Still, I did expect this fight would go a little bit longer. But uh, maybe that means we're not going to be having as much back and forth as uh, in Timeline 1. How much meaning was contained in that word? Hmm... Saber pulls out her sword and runs up the stairs. She does not turn back to the swordsman. So I wonder... I assume Timeline 3 will still have a bit more of Archer, though arguably this could be all that was really needed. Um, still, him being a fake and Shiro, you know, being kind of a fake, there could be something there. Mm. She does not turn back to the swordsman. She runs to fulfill her role. She hasn't Excal blasted, but I assume what she did. Uh. <laughs> um, oh, fuck. He interrupted my train of thought. What was I thinking? <laughs> um, oh, right. She didn't Excal blast, but I assume that even pulling out Excalibur in the first place still took a decent amount out of her. Hmm. I thought she was a beautiful bird, but she turned out to be a lion. <laughs> you sure she's not more of a dragon? <laughs> uh, he murmurs as if that was to be expected. Oh, of course, your technique would have worked if she was a bird, but she was a lion, so your technique to kill birds didn't work. You need to spend more time on the technique to kill lions. Or not you, the real version of you, or whatever. That's confusing. She avoided something that even a sparrow could not avoid, so she cannot be something that is admired. Oh! <laughs> she can't be something that's admired? How dare you? <laughs> I was confident my skills to see through women. I guess I need more training in that as well. What do you mean, your skills? What skills? Your fake skills? You have confidence in your fake skills? You said you don't have pride. Was that a lie? You say you have confidence in your skills, so it's like... Or do you mean your real skills are the real person that isn't Sasaki that you're based on who is also going to... Oh, I don't fucking get it. The swordsman complains with a shrug. His elegant clothing has lost its colors already. Mmm. His stomach is pierced, and his blood-stained feet are vague. Mmm. He looks down at them and sits. Ah, they're vague. They're already starting to phase away. Well, he was already starting to phase away, so he, they're phasing more. The branches shake. The wind coming down from the top of the mountain rustles the forest. Mmm. And when the flowers scatter, the winds stop. And the moon darkens. Uh-huh. Well, that means if the moon darkens, that means it's not staying night anymore. And if it's no longer night, that means it's approaching dawn. 
The assassin did say he'd be gone by dawn, so... The wind stops is also kind of fitting, because Saber's wind stopped, so that she could uh, use Excalibur, which would cause the moon to darken. The swordsman has disappeared without a trace, as if existence was just an illusion. Oh! <laughs> just like that, huh? At that instant, that's a great question at that instant. Now do we have anything on Suzaki? Or not Suzaki? No! No details, no skills, no double phantasm. Ah! <laughs> Anyways, at that instant, we take another save. That assassin fight. Quick assassin fight. Quick ass ass in fight. Alright, we can take another intermission here. At that instant, I developed the strongest weapon I have projected. Okay. You mean you project his AI? Because wow, that's an accomplishment. Or the bone sword? <laughs> no. The bone sword I don't think is gonna come up here. <laughs> Tastes purple, though. What's purple taste like though? But it doesn't even serve as a shield. Okay. What does it serve as? Are you going to make an AO to counter his AO? Because that's definitely something you could do. But where's the reality marble? <laughs> the sword of separation. The mysterious sword cuts through the wind. Destroys six noble phantasm and cuts my body apart. But you're not dead? Mm. I developed the strongest weapon I projected, but it doesn't even serve as a shield. The sword of separation... Cuts through the wind, destroys six noble phantasms. You mean you, the six that you made? The six fakes you made, or what do you mean? Six of his ones. I don't know, that were in the way? And cuts my body apart. It's disappearing. The circuit is disconnected, and Tosaka's magical energy disperses without a place to go. Okay, looks like you're in big trouble. Is Saber gonna have to save you? So she's actually gonna have to be part of the fight after all? Saber did just finish her fight, and, you know, they're, uh, they were on the stairs, which is right next to the courtyard where you ended up in. Damn! I curse my worthlessness. Does Saber have to talk some sense into you? In the written timeline, Saber has to talk the sense into you? I knew that I'm unskilled. I curse myself for never thinking twice. Oh, okay. That's sudden. Curse yourself for never thinking twice. I mean, arguably you should think more, but not in circumstances like this, I suppose. Cursing your worthlessness is the problem. You need determination. That's what's letting everyone else succeed the day. You need determination. Why is this all the magical energy I have? Just a bit more. Oops. <laughs> if I could reach into that darkness just a bit more, I could have fought like him. I fall to the ground. I fly through the air and crash to the ground with great force. Mmm. I don't feel pain from the landing. Okay, that probably would have killed you if it wasn't for Avalon, I would assume. I don't have such a sense anymore. Even my mind is going blank. Before I die, the only thing filling my head is the surprise that my limbs are still attached. Probably because of Avalon. Or maybe you were in a bad ending all along and didn't realize. This could be that doing the Rin thing was wrong. I find that highly unlikely, but... Surprised that my limbs are still attached. So is that all you can manage? I guess a fraud is just a fraud. You cannot save anyone. Mm, I mean, he's decently strong enough to save people. To be a general hero, but, you know, to be a superhero, beating someone like you, it's gonna be tough. My heartbeat gets weaker. Uh, no, don't let him beat you. Don't let his morals beat your morals. Your morals must succeed. 
My lungs do not move, rendering me unable to breathe. Mm. Oh, is this going to spark something? It would have been more fun if I let Archer live. Oh, he would have been a better faker. Mm-hmm. He was a faker as well, but his ideal was not vulgar. Oh? Do you know the difference between our ideals? Um, I mean, he didn't like his new ideal. He grew to hate it, but I guess you mean the original ideal Shiro held. Archer ignored instead to, you know, he'll sacrifice whatever he needs to to save people. As that's the preferred way to go, yeah. I guess you could say that's not vulgar. I mean, I feel like it's more vulgar, but it's more realistic. I can't see anything, but it seems it's not because my eyes are broken. Mm. My organs are just too messed up to function as they should. Maybe it's fortunate you can't see your own demise. I don't have any sense of pain, so I should be able to die easily. Uh, you should, but Avalon's still there. Ah. Oh, I remember now. Now that I think about it, he said your ideal is a borrowed one. How conceited of you to think that you can manage anything when you have nothing you created yourself. Uh huh. So, what do you need, Cher? Do you need to prove that you have something you created, or do you need to prove that? Imitations can surpass the originals. I feel like it would be the latter, but... I can't do that. Do what? Even if I might go brain dead from the pain, I need to regain my consciousness. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. The will to fight back against that mentality. <laughs> because he's bringing up the sore point. The point that, uh, uh-huh. Mm. Manage anything because Shiro needs to succeed at being a superhero. That was the whole point. As long as he has the will to keep fighting, Avalon should be helping him a good amount. And Saber's very close by. Even if I go brain dead from the pain, I need to regain my consciousness. The deep part of me says so as it points to that place. The reality marble place? What place? Huh, the, um, that place you see, that was the vision of where future Shiro ultimately died, right? A superhero, a world where no one gets hurt. Ridiculous, no world can preserve happiness without harming anyone. I feel like it's possible to preserve happiness for pe everyone without harming anyone, but like... We either would have needed more resources, if only the Grail could give us that, or needed less people. So theoretically, what Gilgamesh is doing could potentially make it so that everyone left could have more happiness. I mean, Gilgamesh wouldn't end up doing it like that. I don't think he's not the, you know, nicest king, I would assume. But um, theoretically, there's a theory there. With how wide the population's got, gotten, we would need more recesses out of no re resources out of nowhere for... Um, for everyone to be happy at all times, with no harm coming to anyone. Humans. Humans cannot live without sacrifices. Peace is a myth created by those who cower in fear of the dark. Oh, that's definitely going to hit some buttons. How are you going to respond, Shiro? Cannot live without sacrifices. I mean, the thing is, though, Future Shiro is basically the saying, saying the same thing. He might have not been saying it with as much confidence because he also deep down believed in the um, ideal of saving everyone. But uh, it's still fighting back against the same moral idea. So it's weird that Gilgamesh is even bothering to go down that route. I feel like if Shiro is going to say something to object to that notion here, he could have just said it to object to Future Shiro back then. And that would have given a real something to object. But... <clears throat> Cannot live without sacrifices. Peace is a myth. Mmm. Cower in fear of the dark. That's easy to say for someone who stands on top of a pedestal, who believes that, you know, he deserves all the world's fun, so he doesn't have to be one of the sacrifices, as it were. 
雑種お前の理想とやらは醜さを覆い隠すだけの言い訳にすぎん。Uh, I don't think he's wrong. You mongrel. Your ideal is just an excuse to cover up your ugliness. I don't think that's entirely true, but I think there's definitely truth there. <laughs>、mm. Peace is a myth created by those who cower in fear of the dark. Interesting, you would think that way. Like, you know, because of how you've always been in this、uh, high and mighty position, it'd be hard for you to, you know, empathize with the wills of the people or whatever. But、um, I suppose you've、uh, done a lot in, like, fighting other people and you, you haven't backed down. So you wouldn't think of yourself as a coward. So I suppose when you think of something that isn't what you would do, cowardice is one way you would take it. Hmm. <laughs> Your ideal is just an excuse to cover up your ugliness. Dashes. I raise my arm, which should not be moving. My fallen body and my dying mind. I raise my hand to grab something, like I did on that day. What do you grab? I don't know what's funny, but someone's laughing. That would be Gilly, probably. It seems like everyone in this world is laughing. A fake wish. A borrowed ideal. Someone scorning me, saying that my dream won't come true. First, you yourself said it to yourself, which I feel like was more impactful, but、uh, now Gilly too. Yeah, that is, that's exactly right. My wishes are all borrowed. I just admire the wish of wanting to help someone because it's beautiful.、But、there's nothing that came from within me. My body has always been driven by a curse like obsession with helping others. Mmm. Yeah, definitely curse like. <laughs> Fitting, given that, yeah, Ren's dealing with the curse right now, though. That's why it's a fake. Such an imitation cannot save anything. But. You fought back against Future Shiro about this already and said, well, even if it's fake, I'm gonna try my best anyway, right? First of all, I'm not sure what needs to be saved. Yeah, I said this before, but I feel like the conclusions he's coming to here, he could have on some level came to in the Shiro off. I think you can separate the、um, what can I do from the can the fake surpass the original. Although maybe the narrative is just going to intertwine them here. We'll see. But. But I still felt that it's beautiful. It was not born from within me. I just saw someone save others and copied that behavior. To be fair, if you want originality, you know, with how long the world existed, most original ideas have been taken, as they would say, especially for storytelling, you know. What's new now is how you take all the ideas that have been used before and use them in ways that maybe haven't been used before, but, you know.、Uh, the more minute you get, you get, the more you'll find ideas that maybe haven't been used, but.、Uh, If you take things in more general, broad strokes, basically every, every idea, the broader you get, has been used. I just saw someone save others and copied that behavior. I was empty back then.、Mm. Everyone died and I could not save anyone. You're saying you're not empty now? I could not bear the fear in front of me unless I gave up. Saying that humans are weak.、Mm. That's why. That's why I admired the ideal that you can save them despite how weak they are. Because it was something I did not have, and its sanctity brought tears to my eyes.、Mm. Is that wrong? Of course it's not. Is it a fake if it's not mine? Even if it is a fake, it doesn't have to be bad. Even if my wish is a fake, is it wrong for it to come true? Of course not. But now that we have come to the conclusion that the Grail is evil, I don't see how you're going to make the wish come true unless the narrative pulls something out of its butt. I don't think it's going to come true in this timeline. If it does come true, it'll probably come true in you know, the ultimate final timeline. Um, but the Grail seems to be kind of evil, so unless there's some, like, 
plot twist where, oh, there's a secret good part of the grail. You just have to know how to access it. I'm not sure how this wish has the potential to come true, really. But, uh, at least on a grand scale, like the way Kiritsugu wanted and then gave up on. Oh. Is it wrong for it to come true? No, I don't think it's wrong. Ugh. Ugh. I don't care, even if it's fake. I'll make it come true, even if it's an impossible ideal. Uh-huh. It's an impossible wish from the start, an unreachable utopia. Then even if Emi Ashiro is a fake, what's there has to be true. I mean, if your wish is a fake, you just have to embrace being a fake, I suppose. But I feel like you already did that in the Archer fight. If that's all you're doing here, then it's nothing much different than what you did in the, uh, the well, the other Archer fight. That's right, I already knew that. But you doubted yourself? I can see why you would doubt yourself. You are you. Um, but... Mm, and especially after Future Shiro saved you. It definitely made you question some things. I know that I can't save everything. I know that there's no help without sacrifices. I know that reality is like that because I became an adult. Mm. I know it's only an ideal, but I still continue to seek it. It's not the end after someone gets hurt. Even if the best possible outcome has someone get hurt to save many others, I still want to pursue a resolution where nobody is hurt. If there is no justice in this world, and that people die meaninglessly in this reality, I don't think such words are right. So what are you going to do about it, Shiro? And he reaches this place at the end. What I believe in. What I believed in. He said that they are all fake. But the one who said so followed through on his hypocrisy. Then I can keep going. I don't care, even if it is a fake. Okay. I feel like you're just retreading. Like, this was the ultimate conclusion that let you win the, the Shiro off, so... What else? You're just retreading ground at the moment. First of all, I'm too simple-minded to worry about such a thing. <laughs> well, that's a, a certain form of self-realization, uh, but... <laughs> I make up my mind on this hill of swords. Well, you are on a hill in the Rito Temple. It's a hill of swords. And there's a bunch of swords around because of Gilgamesh, so sure, you could say it's a hill of swords. <laughs> but also, yeah, there's the memory, but still, it works even in the moment. If I can save the world in front of me, I will fight for it. I didn't even need to think about it. You've been thinking a lot about it. Maybe, like, time stopped for you for, like, an instant, but you've been thinking for a lot. <laughs> My world is small. This small world is all I have ever been able to create. So that's what your reality marble will be then. A world where everyone can be saved? Is that the idea behind the reality marble? Archer never explained it if that's the case. Hmm. This body of mine is made of firm swords. Uh-huh. Yes, so I can endure most things. Also, Avalon? Um, is there to help you out? And yeah, your body being made of swords is kind of weird. Why is that? Exactly? That's not normal. Emi Ashiro can keep his dream until the very end. Like, I, you might be talking metaphorically, but literally we've seen your innards looking like swords. That's not normal. Even if... What I seek is nowhere. Okay. 
So that's it. What's it? I feel like you. I don't know. To me, that's so much of a retread of what you already went over in the Shiro off. That that's not really. I don't know. If that's the big revelation that lets him win the fight, I'll be pretty unhappy. But I will see. Dashes exclamation point question mark. I raise my body. I can move my limbs again as soon as my consciousness returns. My body still moves. It's a wonder that I'm still alive, let alone moving after his attack, but I don't care. Mm. If I'm alive, there must be a reason why. Avalon? It's just that I don't know why. Okay, and what are you going to do about that? <laughs> she just casually survives there. I mean, uh, Saber survived Aya in the other timeline. Uh, Shiro, I don't think, faced Aya. He just faced, uh, he faced, um, fake Caliburn, if I remember right. And he practically got cut in half. I think he literally got cut in half. And then the body, like, sued itself back together. Because that's just how strong Avalon is, I believe. But, did you project a shield? I was reluctant to use that sword, but it should have been fatal. You're rather tenacious, boy. You were reluctant? <laughs> What's there to hold back when you have so many weapons? Uh, ooh, unless we got to a weakness of it. Maybe he does eventually run out of weapons. Or maybe there's a weakness involved if he reveals uh, Aya too early, even. I keep my distance while I catch my breath. I know how to do it now. How to do what? Make the reality marble? How? How do you suddenly know how to do it? Because you just have to visualize a world where everyone can be saved? Is that your version of reality marble? Okay. I guess. I should be able to do it with the backup from Tosaka. The problem is the casting. Even though I have it memorized, I don't know how fast I can get it working until I try. Oh, yeah, you have the, the incantation Archer gave memorized? Okay. Interesting. Um, maybe the re- Okay, maybe that's what Saber's role is gonna be. Protect Shiro long enough for him, for him to cast the reality marble then. I suppose that's what, uh, <laughs> what she was, uh, needed for in the first place, though she wanted to just beat him, uh, without Shiro even showing up. Hmm. That was a sword that only a ruler is allowed to use. The reality marble takes conviction? Uh, if that's what it's about, I don't think Shiro would have known it, because he seemed to be like, how will I make it? Now he's like, now I know how to make it. If it's just based on conviction, he should have been like, I don't think I can do it, not how do I do it. So, if it's conviction, then it was being portrayed poorly. That was a sword that only a ruler is allowed to use. Mm, Aya, you mean? That's why he couldn't trace it? Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, I suppose Shiro never traced Excalibur, really. He traced Caliburn, but like, hmm, is Aya? Aya is supposed to be a decent match for Excalibur, so I wonder if there's something there. I don't remember the exact um, lore of Aya, and I don't know that I could check. Uh, well, there's Calibol, blah, 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 blah. If I go to status and I go to Gilgamesh, uh, I don't know that I can check Aya. Oh, wait. Uh, no, yeah, I can't check Aya. So. Oh, wait, skills? Golden rule uh, A. Not the percentage... Uh, not the percentage of gold in one's body, but instead the chances of attracting gold during one's life. Okay. With the level, this level of gold, one will become an incredibly wealthy person. Money trouble will be completely unknown. <laughs> because you have a, a skill that makes it so just money attracts itself to you? Um, I mean, yeah, fate is definitely shonenish at times, but like, you know, I like it when there's better developments than just, hooray! <clears throat> That was a sword that only a ruler is allowed to use. No, Gol isn't literally Gil isn't literally made out of swords. Yeah. Oh, that's what you mean, Gol. Yeah, <laughs> they were talking about Gil. I thought you were talking about Shiro. But anyways, <clears throat> I showed it to you for the fun of it, but it is not something to be used against a mongrel. <laughs> 
Saber is the Saber is the only one allowed to fight against it. <laughs> but you already used it against Shiro though, so you're already breaking your own rule that you made. Breaking your own golden rule. <laughs> I'll not be able to face Saber if I sully it on one such as you. <laughs> Numerous noble phantasms appear. Oh boy, yeah, it seems like there's much more than 17. There's a few even in the distance that they didn't bother properly draw, but that's okay, that I will accept. But they're all third rate. Oh. Do you think you can beat them, Shiro? The difference is obvious after seeing that previous sword. Compared to uh, Ea, for sure. But they're not something I can take lightly, because there's so many of them. Are they third rate compared to the surge from earlier, or just compared to Ea? <laughs> Maybe just gave you perspective. They're more than enough to kill me. The difference in our powers is the same. Even though I managed to survive the previous attack, I cannot match that serpent with my projection. Oh, are you done with your copying? So you finally understand that it's useless, huh? Mm. Then disappear. I will not leave even a piece of your copying brain behind. The noble phantasms are released. And what? Is this when Saber shows up to give me time? To buy me time? Or can Shiro do it all by himself? If he can do it all by himself, then he's got to win pretty quick. Because Saber won pretty quick, to my understanding. Oh, there she is. Alright. But... Shiro! So she does help out somewhat. A blue rushing wind repels them. It's time for her to be the bit of Vegeta, so I can, uh, <laughs> I can uh, be the Goku who makes my, um, uh, my reality marble. Saber, ka. Saber, ka. <laughs> he could have at least did it's Saber. Gilgamesh jumps back instantly. Oh no, is he gonna pull on his golden armor now? Golden armor energize. Even Gilgamesh is cautious against Saber. <laughs> uh, especially with her being powered up like this. He wants to avoid hand-to-hand -hand combo with her, as his technique is inferior. Mm. <laughs> Good, are you alright, Shiro? He is, and you seem to be okay too. That was never the strategy, Saber. Sorry that I am late. I will take it. Well, actually, you were supposed to start fighting Gilgamesh, but um, maybe you want to whittle him down. But uh, Shiro still needs to, still needs to make an important move. Sorry that I am late. I will take over now. Please stay away. Yeah, Gilgamesh will do what he can. Oh, to help uh, Rin with Shinji, huh? That's some confidence. No, I can manage Gilgamesh by myself. You're the one to go, Saber. <laughs> what? <laughs> Gilgamesh is uh, not gonna like that. What? What are you saying, Shiro? You will fight him in that state of yours? No, a Magus cannot match a servant in the first place. I'm kind of different. I mean, I matched future Shiro while he was wounded, sure, but you saw it. You should know that! And you should know that, like, I'm a superhero in the future. Yeah, but Gilgamesh and I are an exception, trust me. <laughs> Gilgamesh is special such that if it were any serv other servant, I couldn't beat him. And even though Gilgamesh beats everyone else, I can beat Gilgamesh. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> Archer's got, like, D-level in Magus or something, so I think, I mean, <laughs> Future Shiro's really smart, and I think even this Shiro has definitely has shades of smartness. Um, I think something I said towards the end of Timeline 1, and I do believe this, is that he's really smart, he just, um, has, you know, his, uh, inner problems hold him back a lot. And, uh, they hold him back less now in Timeline 2, but they still hold him back at times. Oh. 
is still not as smart as Fuchishiro, of course, but Gilgamesh and I are exception, trust me. I might not be able to be other servants, but I can beat the weenie Gilgamesh. Uh, I'll probably be able to beat him. <laughs> Saber gasps. Saber is surprised because she believes my words. <laughs> How does Gilly feel about that? Please hurry to the back, Saber. Tosaka is stopping the Holy Grail by herself. You're the only one who can destroy it, though. Dashes. She closes her eyes once. A few seconds. No, it's not even for a second. It just feels like that to you because time moves slower for you because you have your battle instincts. Good luck. I will go save Rin. She says what I want to hear the most and steps away from Gilgamesh. Her silver armor turns away. And how does Gilly feel about that? Saber. Saber. I stop her just once. I could not save you. Oh, that's abrupt. Save you as in find a way to keep you in this world and not have you or your stupid wish? Shiro might know Saber's stupid wish from his memories from future Shiro. And I say it. Couldn't save her. Because she's gonna be sent back in time and die on the hill? Hmm, that's big. And all of a sudden, I say it in place of the one who cared for her. Oh! The one who cared for her? You mean the version of Shiro who fell in love with her? Are you acknowledging that version of Shiro? Or... What? I say it in place of the one who cared for her. That's huge if that's what that is implying. That's self-awareness of other timelines. I don't think that Holy Grail is the one you seek. But you think there is a good version? Go take a good look at it so you won't make a mistake next time. As if there is a next time? Archer? How does Archer work for this? I don't think so. I mean, I don't think there was a strong implication. There was not. Uh, as far as like, uh, maybe there was a weak implication that I missed. But there wasn't much of one for future Shiro. I mean, he knew about Saber's wish, but um, he didn't seem to have any strong feelings towards specifically save her beyond the norm that Shiro would feel, I would say. So the idea of Archer being the one that cares that deeply about Saber would just come out of left field as far as I'm concerned. Anyways, go take a look at it so you won't make a mistake next time. Shiro. Sorry, I can't put this into words real well. I guess I wasn't fit to be your master. Well, you aren't her master anymore at the moment. So, I couldn't even figure out your true desire. Hmm. That is not true. You are my master, Shiro. Uh, not at the moment, but sure. <laughs> Your true desire. I guess it shows that in the back, Shiro was still, you know, he cares for Saber and was thinking about her the whole time and, you know, what her wish might be and all that. Oh. Maybe there's a bad ending version where he follows up on that, but uh, then everything goes to shit. In which case, I'll be sure to look into that, but, uh, hmm. You are my master, Shiro. I like the bromance they have here, but yeah. I can see why Shiro would want to help her out even in this stage, even if it's more in the back of his mind in this timeline. Saber. Saber. Will there be an afterwards? I shall go fulfill my role as a servant. We, will, we shall talk afterwards. I mean, if your role is to destroy the Grail, I don't know if we'll get much of an afterwards, but... If you're promising. She runs without turning back. 
She's gallant and looks like the wind. Oh. Saber has left. All right, that's a beat. Okay. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> um, right then. Uh, we can just go here. <laughs> Shiro gains his confidence. Confidences. Sure, he gains his confidences. Multiple. Shiro gains his confidences. So, um, at this point, um, yeah, we are at a bit of a beat here. Shiro is now really prepping up to beat Gilgamesh. Saber has beaten Assassin and is now going to help out Rin. At this point, I'd love to continue and finish the climax today. But, you know, real life obligations and stuff are things that I have today. So I have to stop around now today. So I'm just going to take this beat um, and I'll try to go for as long as, uh, long as I need to tomorrow, hopefully, to, um, to finish, I don't know, finish the whole thing, but at least finish the, the fight. There might be some aftermath, but I at least want to get hit the aftermath tomorrow, hopefully. But for now, we're going to stop. So I'll see you guys next time. Still don't have an outro phrase. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's ramping up. Shiro's finally believing in himself. That's good. I want to see how angry Gil is, but I'll leave it since they already had their beat. I'm sure Gil knows. He's either going to be really mad or he's going to be really laughing mad, as it were, and being like, you think you can beat me? Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. So we'll have to see if, uh, we'll have to see if Christmas is the in-season in or not, you know. <laughs> Stop recording.